Today's screencast is about blood spatter. The first kind of blood spatter evidence we're going to talk about is free falling blood. If there's no horizontal motion to the blood drop, it will free fall in a spherical drop because of gravity. The greater the distance it falls, the greater the size of the circle. As the angle of impact decreases away from 90 degrees, you're going to get a more elongated stain. So this is what you would see with just a vertical fall at a 90 degree angle of impact. the length is pretty much equal to width. But if you have a blood droplet that falls at an angle of impact that's less than 90 degrees, you're going to see more elongated. So the length is going to be greater than the width. And this is the direction of travel of that blood droplet. You can see the difference in height fallen here. The fall is from various heights. Beyond seven feet in height, you don't see a change in diameter. Different types of blood spatter can come out of projected and impacted blood. The greater the impact or force, the smaller size and greater number of blood stain drops. So getting hit several times by a fist, like what you see here in A, is fewer but larger stains as opposed to being struck by a bullet over here. You see the bullet hole. And this is somewhere in between, maybe a baseball bat. We're trying to figure out where the source of blood came from. The first way we do that is try to find the point of convergence. point of convergence is a two-dimensional image that looks like this. We'll talk about how to create that in just a second. Point of origin adds a third dimension to that image. So we're actually determining how high off the ground that blood spatter came from. In practice, String and protractor is used at the scene. And that's what we're going to be doing in our lab. And then that data is brought back to the laboratory and a computer model is generated. Point of convergence is determined by drawing lines through the long part of the oval blood droplets and then the, you circle the area where the lines come together. So in this case you have lines that are drawn through the long axis or the long parts of the oval blood droplets and they come together right about here. That's your point of convergence. What we're determining here with point of convergence is where the injured person was standing. When they started bleeding, where were they? Here's a couple of other examples of point of convergence. And they don't always act perfectly. 
but you get a general area. So the point of convergence for these six blood droplets here is right in that area. These three are right here. Point of origin is the height of injury from the ground. This can be a problem because different people are different heights. So if you have a person, if the height of the injury from the ground is five feet, that's going to be in my forehead. But someone who's taller than me, it's going to be in their neck or in their chest or in their arm or whatever. So we, if you don't know the height of the injured person, that can be a problem. This is the formula for point of origin to calculate the angle of impact. The arc sine, or sine to the minus one, of the width divided by the length of the droplet, and that's going to give you the angle of impact. We'll work this through in class so you can see what that actually looks like on a calculator. So to show you what the point of origin looks like here, how we would do that, we measure the length and the width. Again, we're arc sine, or sine to the minus one of width over length. Oops, hold on. <coughs> so we're going to plot this out on graph paper. You can see the more oval this is almost round because the angle of impact is almost 90 degrees. The smaller the angle of impact, the more oval the blood spatter gets. So we plot those out, determine the angle of impact. This is the uh, y-axis here, or the origin. This is the point of convergence, right here, at 0, 0. P, O, C. Point of convergence. That's where the person was standing. That's why you see this person standing right here. That's where they were standing. The blood drops we measure, the width divided by the length, take the arc sign to figure out the angle of impact, and then you take string and extend that over to the y-axis, point of origin is here. So if we have this person standing here, the point of origin on a person of this height is right here, the neck and high chest area. So that's where this person sustained injury. If someone, if a suspect has, fleed, has fled sorry, the scene, can look in hospitals to see, okay, is there anyone in surrounding hospitals with an injury in this particular area? This website is blood spatter pictures, plenty of them. Some are using the PowerPoint. There are some great blood spatter pictures now in your books as well, in your textbooks that didn't used to be there in the old edition.